What's up everyone, it's an Ivesa here and today I'm going to be doing my first impressions on this new number 38 from GEC and also I'm just going to be talking about why I got into GEC and um, yeah, so this is the first, my first GEC video I've ever done. This is actually my second GEC though. I recently got one of the um, Vipers off, uh, off the secondary, I believe it's the 47 is the model number and it's the one in burlap micarta with the satin blade and i really like it but um my birthday's coming up and i haven't really thought of many things so i bought that and then my family was like well we'll just give you that so i gotta wait to open it until my birthday so i'm excited when i'll get to have that but um in the meantime i bought this 38 and this is the first gec i've ever gotten off of a drop off the primary from a uh, retailer of GEC and I've been trying for a while now and I'm just um, it's really hard to do just because GEC is not a huge company and they have a decent amount of retailers so maybe these retailers are only getting like 10 15 knives I don't know how accurate that estimate is but that would just be what I would guess so they sell out really fast I got this one off knife ship free I was just in the right place at the right time I was on my phone got that email notification and then bought it so I'm very happy to get one off the primary and not have to spend extra money on the secondary. And um, yeah, so why did I get into GEC knives? Well, it kind of started a couple months ago uh, when I first saw the Indian River Jack from Knife Ship Free. I actually don't know how long ago that knife came out, but um, I saw that and I was like, man, that's the, like the perfect slip joint for me. Then I looked on eBay and I, I got very sad because I realized I'm probably never reasonably, reasonably, reasonably going to get one unless I get really into these GECs. But um, yeah, then I kept looking a little bit more. I started watching a bunch of pretty much all of Randy Johnson's traditional videos. He's one of my favorite YouTubers and I watched some other ones and I got into them a lot more. Now keep in mind, I'm still new to this. I don't know all the technical terms. Um, I'm not really an expert on the rating of the pull action and stuff like that. But um, so if there is anything that you hear me say it and you're like, oh, that's just wrong or oh, you just got some more information to say, I'd love to hear that in the comments just because I'm trying to learn here. But um, yeah, so I got into GECs a little bit. I've been going at every single new drop. I missed out on all of the crown lifters, so I was bummed about that. I really won that cher that one in um, Cherry Bone, but you know, I can get those on the secondary. I'll just have to pay a little bit more. But eventually I got this one off the primary, so I'm happy about that. Um, I'm happy to start getting into more GECs. And the things that appealed to me about traditionals is just, especially GEC, is how thin their ground. And I don't feel like there's many companies doing what GEC does. Just, I feel like, you know, a lot of companies try to modernize every single thing they do. And GEC is just keeping it old school. And they're still making these on old machines, you know, they're just normal small American company and I like to support them and they actually have decent prices on the primary market um, if the retailer isn't like upping the prices on them and because this one was like $115 that's pretty good I saw one of these go on the secondary for 190 so I think you probably will pay around that right now for one of these I plan or if I sell this in the future I won't upcharge you so maybe um, after I carry this for a couple of weeks and I do my full review on it uh, be on the lookout if I do sell this. Don't really know if I'm going to or not. But um, yeah, so that is my thoughts. And that's really why I got into GEC. And I feel like I'm going to prefer single bladed traditional knives. I just really think the split back whittler pattern or just the um, engineering behind it is really cool. But um, single blade is probably the best for me because I already um, carry one of these as a secondary to my primary modern folder. And so I'm not going to need four blades in case uh, the first three go dull. I think you guys understand what I'm saying there. So let's get into this knife and what I like about it. First, let's talk about how it looks. And this is just, I feel like all traditional knives look good. Pretty much any handle material that GEC does, I like, uh, except for maybe a few of the acrylic patterns aren't my favorite. But um, yeah, I really like the blood wood on this. I like the dark grain mixed with just the lighter color of wood. I just think that it looks really good. It's got polished bolsters here. So you see my phone and there's me. Uh, I like the basic shield. You know, it's simple, it's effective. I think it looks good. I don't think there's many people who um, wouldn't like that. Maybe their only complaint would be that it looks a little bit boring. But 
The brass liners on the back look really good. The satin blade is nice. There's no edge on this, which I kind of prefer a sterile satin blade. Um, I don't really like everything polished just because as you can see like on these bolsters, I don't know if it'll show up, but there's some just hairline scratches there. And I really, I've only carried this once and I've sharpened it once. So um, I haven't really put very much use on it. And I think it was just like that from the factory, just cause you can't really, I guess they just don't bring it to a full on mirror polish. But um, yeah, I really like how this knife looks. It just looks so good. And I, it's weird my taste in knives because I really like, you know, the modern, these very modern tactical folders. I think that this is a very good looking knife, but I also like, you know, wood handles, brass liners, clip point blades, things like that that I just think look really good. So let's talk about the blade on this. So this is a 1095 blade. It's a Warncliffe blade shape, or at least the main blade. And um, the reason that it's smaller is just because of the split back wheeler design. They can't really make it much longer. As you can see how tightly things are packed in here, there would 100% be blade rub, like really bad blade rub, if it went all the way to the back here. And how this split back whittler works is basically there are two um, individual springs on the back here for this Warncliffe, this small Warncliffe blade right here. As you can see, one spring goes to that and then one spring goes to this small pin blade right here. And what they, there is kind of like a wedge in the middle, almost like a backspacer. That's what I would call it. Don't know what the proper term is, but that backspacer tapers down here. And then eventually it tapers down to, it's very small and then goes away. And those two springs that start as individual springs here, I guess, converge into one spring uh, that is the spring for the main blade, as you can see here. And there's no half stop on the main blade. Um, that doesn't really bother me all that much. It opens and closes fine, but some people might like a half stop. There are half stops, so on these smaller ones, these have lighter pulls on them, but um, yeah, there are half stops. So overall, that's why I think the split back wheeler is cool, especially just because those tolerances are so tight. All these blades are nice and centered, and they just did a very, very good job with it. I mean, this is like Chris Reeve level of tolerances, which is very impressive, especially for the price point that this thing is charging. So for the blade 1095 as a blade steel, um, I had honestly, I think this is one of the first knives I have in 1095, probably the most basic carbon steel there is. Uh, it's a steel that's very easy to heat treat. A lot of um, people, sometimes I'll just watch knife making YouTubes on YouTube videos just because I'm bored. And a lot of times people suggest 1080, 1095 in order to start with. And so I have no doubt that it's a fine carbon steel, but these will take a patina pretty easy. Um, I think that that looks cool. I like a patina and it seems like there is some kind of darkening around the um, nail nick already just because I pinched this knife open. So <laughs> you guys, I must have greasy hands or something. But um, yeah, it is a little bit darker right there. So um, I would like to see this thing all patinaed out. I don't really cut much food though. So I don't think I'm going to run into like, or I'm not going to have like a really dark patina on this. I'm just going to let it do it naturally. But one thing that always impressed me about traditionals is how thin they are behind the edge. That's ten thousandths behind the edge. This is something that you never, you rarely ever get on a modern knife like a Spyderco Benchmade, especially not something like ZT. And um, really, it's just like custom knife makers, or after you get a knife reground and some of Microtech knife, Microtech knives like the LEDT, a lot of knives are not ground this thin. And I just wish that a lot of them were just because this is a secondary. I mean, I'm using it for basic EDC stuff. I'm not doing anything crazy with it that I would need a thicker geometry in order for it to be stronger. And so that's why I really like how thin it is. And it's just a very good cutter. And also the Warncliffe is a perfect secondary blade shape just because that tip is nice and low. So you get a whole lot of power on utility cuts like this. And it's also a very thin tip. So you can do a lot of detail work with this. And I really like this knife. I just think that it's a awesome knife to carry secondary to your modern folder. My only issue is just the three blades. I don't really, honestly, I don't see myself ever using this blade right here just because it's a smaller Warncliffe. And this is already a decently small Warncliffe. So I don't think I'm ever going to need a smaller blade to do even more of a detailed cut than what this can do. And also the pin blade. I could, I might use it some here and there, but I just feel like I'm, probably just I've only used this main blade so far I've only sharpened this main blade so far and so yeah that's that let's talk about fit and finish a little bit so fit and finish is one thing that GEC is probably a step ahead of pretty much every other traditional knife 
um, companies out there from what I've seen on YouTube and stuff. And the bolsters, like the transition from the wood to the bolsters is very nice. Um, I can't really catch my fingernail on this one. Maybe, yeah, I can right there. I don't care about this, honestly. I think it's kind of weird that people complain about this and want it to be seamless, but I can maybe catch it there. And But overall, it's just a very smooth transition. I can catch it a little bit, I guess. But um, I don't know. Yeah, so very, very good fit and finish, especially on this shield here. Um, no gaps at all. No gaps in the back except the one back there. But that's kind of how split back wheelers work. So very, very nice fit and finish on this. My only main issue is I think there's a little bit of blade rub on here. Let me, let me get my flashlight because this is kind of difficult to show up on camera. You see that there, that light reflecting? Yeah, there is a little bit of blade rub that you can see on that side. And then right here, there is that little scratching there. So I have not really used this knife for anything that would scratch the blade bad. And so I think that blade rub is just from rubbing against the other two blades right here. That doesn't bother me that much. And I feel like blade rub on something like this, it's very, very hard not to have it. But some people I've seen are saying that they don't have it. So I'd be curious if yours does or not. But um, it doesn't really bother me all that much just because... I mean, I think it's cooler that all these blades are so closely packed together and it'd be nearly impossible not to get blade rub. But if you have one that doesn't, good for you, that is really, really cool. So that's all I got to say for the blade and the fit and finish. Oh, wait, let me touch on sharpening a little bit. So sharpening this, it was fine, 1095. Um, pretty easy steel to sharpen. It wasn't like the easiest thing in the world, or it didn't really seem that much harder than any of your basic steels kind of in its class but one thing that was a little bit annoying is it's not going to show up on camera just because this isn't it'd just be hard to see but the Warncliffe kind of tapers up a little bit at the end here and it kind of tapers like um, that and that way towards the base right there and you might just think oh yeah okay no problem with that it's just a little bit different not going to be an issue well when you sharpen a worn cliff uh, what you pretty much do is you just hold a dead angle flat and just go back and forth like this the whole time and when it goes like that it just gets a little bit trickier and kind of harder to sharpen also one thing with this 1095 is I felt like I was holding my angle fine I felt like I was sharpening it just like I would any other knife I felt good about it and then after I went through all my strops and everything, I couldn't shave my arm hair with it. So what I did, I just brought it up to a finer grit. I brought it up to my Spyderco Ultrafine. And after that, I was able to shave just fine. So no issues there. Just a little bit curious what the issue was on that. Maybe there's a little bit fatigue of uh, fatigue steel still on the edge. And um, I was just kind of sharpening that. And maybe I'll get that worked out in the future. So for ergonomics, the ergonomics are actually surprising, surprisingly good for me. This is a little bit of a weirder shaped handle. You know, it's not something that you'd think would be that comfortable, but it feels great in my hand. I don't imagine myself doing many cuts like this, uh, mainly cuts like this, and uh, it feels great in that grip right there. The only really issue I can see in the future for ergos, or at least right now, is like these two blades are very thin and very skinny. And so, you know, if you have your fingers on there for a while, it's probably not going to be the most comfortable thing to hold on to. Also, this um, pin blade here, it's not, it does not have a proud tip, but I feel like it could very well in the future with a few sharpenings, um, just because you see how close it is right there. And if that tip becomes a little bit proud, that will be poking into your finger when you use it. But uh, I, I think you can just file down the kick right there and get it. Um, more into the handle but once again the nail nick would be harder to get um, access to when you do that so it's just something that you might want to look out for for in the future but I don't see myself using the pen blade very much and I don't see myself having to sharpen it very much so for the um oh and one more thing about these other blades uh I don't it's just this is not very comfortable to hold on to if you're using one of these just because it's got this big sweeping worn cliff here with the top swedge so it's thin right there and you would probably honestly never have to use this knife or this blade shape in this grip uh, but if you did that wouldn't be very comfortable um i if i used it i'd probably just go like that if i'm like opening a box or something i don't know but um yeah it's it's a thing i guess for the action the action is good um i don't know the pool ratings on these just because i've only had two of two gecs i have a couple of cases right here this one uh, is a stronger pool than this one 
or then the main blade of this one, but they both feel maybe like somewhat close to each other. That one's just a little bit stronger. The noise this one makes is very cool. It's got a decently robust, I guess, ricasso area right here that slams against these two springs and it sounds good. Just a really nice noise. And also there is no half stop, like I said before, which doesn't bother me all that much. Here's the closing action snaps right back in there. The springs are weak on these two little ones. Um, I probably prefer them to be weaker than too strong just because they're small blades and you're not going to need much like tight tension at the top of them. But yeah, definitely pretty weak springs on here. So some people might not like that. But one thing that I love about this action is you can pinch it open. As you can probably tell, I don't really keep my fingernails very long. I kind of just um, rip them off a lot. It's just kind of a bad habit I'm in, I guess. Uh, and so having to, you know, get my fingernail really detailed in there and then it's slamming against the end right there just isn't the most comfortable thing. So I am a fan of just being able to pinch it open and you can definitely do that with this one and it is really nice. So I like that. It's pretty much how I open it all the time. That's probably why there's some darkening right there just from my thumb and my finger hitting it right there when I open it. So for the value, kind of feel bad talking about the value because they're just going to go up on the secondary. But I mean, for the price I got it, excellent price. Really good, especially for the fit and finish on one of these. And um, I believe they're backed with a pretty good warranty. Never tried it myself. But um, yeah, good price out of the box. Um, if I saw this, I think I already said this in this video, but I saw one go for 190 on the secondary like today. And my thoughts about that, would I pay 190 for it? Yeah, I still think that that's a pretty good deal. And GECs have such good fit and finish that paying extra for the on the secondary market doesn't seem as bad as, you know, buying a paramilitary two for $300 because you're still getting a Spyderco. I feel like you're getting great fit and finish on these knives. And so I think that um, even though nobody likes that the prices go up, it's just there and it is what it is. My thoughts about it, a bunch of people are like, shame on you if you uh, upcharge the price. But I guess my thoughts are that people are going to do it. GEC is going to make as many knives as they can, but they're a small company, so um, they're not going to be able to put out thousands of them. And so I think that um, uh, people should just accept the fact that the prices are not going to go up because are you really going to convince Knife Lover 99 on eBay not to make 50 bucks on a knife? You know, it's just not going to happen. But um, that is going to do it for the video. That's all I got for you guys. Um, If you got anything for me, uh, any traditional information, things I need to know, I'd appreciate that in the comment section. Um, If you like these traditional videos, I'd be open to making more of them just because I'll probably be buying a couple more of these if I find some ones that I like. I Just looking at it, I like the 71, the Bullnose series, the Farm and Fields. Those are pretty nice, but... That is going to do it for the video. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe if you're new. And I'll see you guys in the next one.